you know, we're interested in sort of bringing the work, the physical work to a city and then allowing this, and then hiring the city to build these sort of uh, experiences. And so it's really not really a, about a challenge as opposed to, you know, creating a series of sketches. The process was very much accelerated, um, and I was working with dancer. Uh, there was ended up being eight of us. We started off with two <laughs> at the beginning of the process, and then it expanded to eight. Um, but I think it was important to include uh, more movers into the experience and thinking about um, the sound suits, what the sound suits required. Um, what the movers required, what the space required. Um, there needed to be large volume, uh, but there also needed to be uh, flexibility, versatility. That was very important for me. You guys like go down. Yeah? Does that make sense? And move our person. Clarify what that is. Yeah? Yes. How do you feel, Eric? Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the process was accelerating in that the Saturday we, we had the reveal um, where we see these sound suits, these objects we've, we may have seen but have never really worked with. Um, and it was a new experience trying to figure out how to put them on, you know, how to take care of them, what is our relationship to them. I really wanted to just sort of provide this box. You open the box and at that moment you've got to sort of determine what am I sort of engaged in. The fact that one's identity is completely removed and the physical body really is, is not there. And so how do you sort of approach scale? How do you approach uh, space? Left, right, together. Hand and heads go down. Then you open up on the caca, boom. And you fall on it. You say, yes. You know, I'm not looking for a sort of set, finished work, but, you know, whether or not the work still has presence in a very short kind of uh, sort of exchange of, of ideas. <laughs> I love open rehearsals. It is one of the richest experiences of being a creator and one of the richest and most re rewarding responsibility that as artists we have is to share our work and share what we're thinking and to share our process uh, with the world. That's something I very much share in my own um, creative practice and was very excited about um, with MOCAD that they were opening up this space um, because I think it's important that it's not a private space but it's very much a porous space that knows no boundaries. I think there are moments if we're trying to work out specific things or we're having um, intimate personal um, 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 conversations that need a safe space. I think there are definitely times for that uh, but I think for this particular project it was important to keep um, an open space to allow it because of what the sound suits ask, because of what the work asks there needed to be porous boundaries where people can just check it out and see what's going on and say, what, what are, the, what are these sounds? What is this creation? Um, and, and also it's a contemporary art museum. Like, yes, we're working through things, we're moving and, and, and what does that do? And I, I would actually be excited to see the people who experienced the MOCAD experience to come to the performance, I would be interested to see what they what they saw in that um, because it's very much different maybe than what they saw. And then there was this like techno and house music that's playing, and they're like, "How is this all piecing together?" And so that was that was exciting to see that, um, and it really did coalesce um, really um, in the in the twilight hour. John Collins of Underground Resistance. Um, he is an amazing DJ, um, very easy to work with. Um, he had some ideas, I had some ideas, but we were very open to seeing what this was created. Um, the sound suits were very inspirational for both of us because we both went to the um, exhibit and to actually see um, what we were dealing with and seeing kind of what the world is that we were um, 
entering was important for both of us. Uh, but and really what we did was that I would video record the rehearsals and send him the ideas and saying, well, I think this goes into the next thing as far as movement is concerned and thinking about the arc. And um, I knew from the very get go we needed dynamics that if we have strong beat the entire time that began, you know, that was very clear conversation around arc and dynamics. But aside from that, it was very open. Um, and he had some ideas, he had some tracks that he was thinking, and I said, oh, that's dope, or oh, we're looking for something a little slower. So it was a very um, effortless, maybe? Uh, it was uh, without effort that we just bounced ideas off of each other. Um, it wasn't a struggle. Like, he would come to rehearsal, I would send him things, and it was, it was good. It went well to be in the space, having an audience, having people revved up and energized and ready to go. Um, it was clear they were very excited about it, um, the, with the hooting and the hollering and the clapping and the woo. You know that was very positive, and I I love uh, that Cranbrook supported artists to come um, come here, to support audiences to come to this space to support artists. You know, and that there's so many different organizations that have come together um, to support hundreds of artists. You know, this is just one dance lab. There's another project with Ruth Ellis, so it involves hundreds of people. Um, and I think they just do an amazing work of bringing everybody together. You know, I'm an artist with a civic responsibility. That's why I'm in Detroit. I'm introducing Ch Detroit back to Detroit. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, him and John had never mm -hmm. exchanged connections. So this is what, what it's about. It's about, you know, Detroit is in an upswing. And so I went to Cranbrook 
thank God for Detroit, because when I went to Cranbrook, I was the only minority there. Mm. And honey, Detroit saved my fucking spirit, trust mm. me. Mm. Detroit, Cranbrook provided me the intellect, Detroit provided me the soul. Mm -hmm. And so it was my sort of way of giving back to Detroit what it gave to me. And, and then at the same time, you know, it, again, it's me introducing Detroit back to Detroit. There are so many creative people here and we tend to sort of become, we tend to become isolated mm -hmm. from one another and doing our own thing and hustling that you forget that there's, there's a lot of people here that you can be working with. The thing that I continually go back to, um, so I think about my professional life and I think about my early training and what Detroit has. And the thing that I noticed throughout that is it's about the work, W-E-R-K. And when people say Detroit hustles harder, they are not lying. And that's the thing that's kind of attractive about the city, that things are really, um, can be really tough. Um, but how do you uh, get through that? And how do you find resiliency? And how do you find um, progress um, within all of that? Um, and I think it's rooted in, in the work and really getting down into the grit of the work that really attracts me about the city's ethos. And so that's really what um, I think a connection thing because of thinking about, again, my early training, where I grew up, um, thinking about my professional career, that that was a, um, that is a through line that I share uh, with Detroit. Um, so for me, Detroit is my, my second home. Um, and even though I travel and do other things, this is a baseline for me um, in thinking about the work and thinking about uh, when people talk about Detroit, they often think about revitalization, which is a fair term to use. Um, but I prefer the word re resiliency, um, that Detroit has always um, had an undercurrent, a cultural, artistic um, undercurrent. It's always been there. It's always been there. These um, waves have always been there. And for me, I'm just joining in. <laughs> uh, so when the tidal wave finally comes in, um, and people will know what's up and, and, and there's a certain resiliency that even though these currents will go in and out, recede in and out, um, Detroit's been there um, and people have been there and that's the important kernel to remember um, and that's attractive to me.